orchid shenanigans outdoors. We'll get to the fun part just now. Another little freak wind, another little storm. You think I'd learn, right? Well, I did. According to my judgment, I did. But according to how strong the wind was and where this was positioned, this nobody was in the middle of a table, pretty much crammed in with other orchids. And yeah, it got blown off. And one morning, hello, my orchid was on the floor. So we're going to take care of this really quickly. Thank goodness, thank goodness for my setup. I'm so pleased because this is what I consider an emergency up pot. And all I need to do is fill around. I brought myself two spare microfibers just in case I needed them because I was wondering if the root ball was wedged into the microfiber, but it wasn't. So we can use the same microfiber as before. But let's have a look. Now that we're at it, let's have a look. That looks pretty decent to me. Yeah, one microfiber was wedged in, so we have to take care of that. But the root ball looks decent to me, so I'm not going to do anything else except get rid of this old support here. And I'm just going to add the second microfiber into this pot because it had two before. It did well with two microfibers and this pot is going to be a bigger pot. So I'm going to maintain the level of moisture just by adding the second microfiber in. And then let's have a look-see. I do want to use the old media again. It looks pretty clean to me. And I would like to guard against breaking any of the nubbins because they actually didn't break when the orchid fell. Okay, so I just got interrupted a little bit here. I don't want these roots to dry out too much. This is just plain RO water I'm keeping in just to not fertilize at this point in time, seeing as I don't see any buds separating from the stem. So just keeping that root ball wet. Now let's get back to what we were actually doing. Just going to put my support in, check with the orchid the height. Oh, that looks great. That looks great. I'm keeping her centered. There is no specific direction of growth here. So just in the center and then she can do what she wants for another year or two. And I have not lost any buds. I don't think I've lost any buds. I've lost a leaf. It's kinked. That's not a big deal. I think you live and learn, hey? I thought I did. I thought I had it all secured and good to go. The other orchids, some of them were wired to their stands just to be safe. And this one in the middle of the table, I thought it was going to be perfect, but nope. The wind had other ideas. So I just want to get this out of the way before we look at everybody else. I just lost a bud, yeah. I did lose a bud down there. All right. Shame. Okay, let's go. Okay, that's her done. She was filled up with rainwater, but now I'll just flush her through one more time with plain RO water. This is not about watering the orchid, it's more about keeping the microfiber damp 
because of the setup that she is in. What a shock. Now the support, in case anybody's wondering, it's mainly for me to keep the older canes secure and in place. So I'll put that support on afterwards, but after this little shock horror thing, I'd like to show you what else is going on, what other orchid shenanigans are happening that are much more pleasant than seeing an orchid on the floor and almost grabbed by a puppy to be destroyed. Let's go and see what else is going on. Oh, a little bit of a cheer me up from Maxillaria variabilis, cousin it. I absolutely hate this wind, I can't tell you. So thank you everybody for being here. Really, really appreciate it. Sorry for this unconventional start. I saw the orchid, I saw the great root system, and I thought, you know what? I'm just going to get on and film this. My demeanor wasn't exactly at the right place, so I do apologize for that. But I already had an Encyclia Garciana being dragged away by a puppy. I turned my back and it was gone. The orchid will survive, but when you see that in your puppy's mouth, you're like going, no, please no. And then you come outside next day and you see an orchid on the floor and then you see the puppy is already there. I'm like, no, not again. Pot broken and everything, but here she is. I'm gonna keep at it. I'm gonna put her into the blooming alley shortly. But first of all, thank you again for joining me. I really appreciate it. Let's have a look, see what outdoor shenanigans are going on. My Dendrobium Berioda. Look at this. I counted in my October spikes hunt video, 132 spikes in general happening throughout my collection in October. And I only allocated 15 spikes to this orchid because I didn't want to exaggerate. We have 40. If my counting and recounting didn't cause an error, there are 40 spikes on the Berioda. Incredible, absolutely incredible. So pleased. And some are already opening. Very pleased about that. Cymbidium buds are forming beautifully. I like the fact that they're facing that way, except for one's gonna be like a little bit squashed in there. I'm sure it'll figure its way out somehow, but coming along really nicely, considering the climate that they've had to endure. And the same with my fires. Yeah, the plant itself doesn't look like something I would take to a judging show, <laughs> but the spikes are coming along really well. So there's very little protection for her out here. I guess I'm pushing my luck, but no problems whatsoever. The longer they get, the more volatile they'll become. But for the time being, this is good. Very pleased to see this. Let's go on to the Blooming Alley. Lofty Heights, my Zygonesia Murasaki Komachi. Another spike that I discovered on my 132 spikes hunt in October. A couple of days later, I saw a second spike coming out. We're going back to October when this happened. Check this out. It is now the end of January and I still don't have blooms. I mean, they're coloring up really nicely. That's true. I'm starting to see all the beautiful color. I've seen the beautiful color of the buds for a long time now. So, hey, anytime, whenever you're ready, Murasaki, I mean, you know, you call the shots. I am your slave. Very surprising and very happy. My no ID Zygopedalum, two spikes. It's been a fight for two years with this orchid and I think we're both winning now. She seems to be happy in the Lekka and self-watering now. I saw one spike and I was super pleased, but then lo and behold, spike numero deux poked out of that sheath. While we're up here, let me pan around slowly. Look at Senua over there. All the buds and blooms are now open. There are 30 blooms this year in total. So I was up on that angle looking over. I thought, I'm just gonna zoom in and show the blooms. And then I had a recheck of my head. I'm like, are you crazy? Get up close. 
30 blooms this year. Pretty, pretty amazing. I think it's just gorgeous, all these little eyes. It reminds me of the locker of Men in Black, you know, when Will Smith opens the locker and they go, all hail, all hail. <laughs> Look at them all staring at us. Very, very beautiful. So the top spike, the first one to open is fading now. But the other ones are just pops of color. Absolutely beautiful, I love it. Well, Sony Eye is chugging along. I'm not sure about this one. It is deciduous. We're losing a leaf. We shall see. And everybody else is just doing their winter thing. Victoria Regina is actually doing really well. <laughs> Those growths, the long ones that you see, have really developed beautifully throughout this winter so far. And they're picking up speed now as well. And that little keiki that we mounted together the first time last year when I had to remount mount this orchid. Yeah, that's chugging along nicely too. I'm liking the healthy look of it. And then all the unicums are sleeping and the anosmum. And I've got back there my Eonopsis popcorn haruri. I bring the popcorn haruri inside as I do all the other mounts, the brassavolas and such for the night. But for now, everybody else can just stay outside and the proof is in the pudding. I mean, that Victoria Regina is just nailing it. It must absolutely love this, these temperatures. I'm, I'm glad somebody does. <laughs> Back there, we're going to go down now. Big orchid, very big orchid, but she's in her forever spot. Unless there's watering or flushing to be done, this is where she lives. And she's really pumping out the little spikes now. Two years ago, these are the growths from two years ago. So she will not be blooming on last year's growths. She'll bloom on the growths from previous two years. And the other ones are done. They're just there to provide storage. But I'm glad after what this orchid went through, she was divided potted up, taken off a mount, and then she also fell off a table by a windstorm. Because silly me wanted her out getting rained on. Then she was potted up again. So this orchid, thank goodness, is still going to bloom and I think she is going to be all right. Yay for dendrobiums. <laughs> Here on the left is going to be quite the spectacle. This is my Colmenara Masai Red. I have six spikes on her, one spike less than last year, but I've also not been heavy on the fertilizer with her. The more I fertilize her, the bigger she gets. If I want to keep her in my collection, I have to be a little bit more, let's say conservative about how much fertilizer I give her because I do want to keep her. And she has moved from the bottom shelf in order to let those spikes grow up onto this little shelf. And for the time being of her being in spike and in bloom, this is where she lives. It's going to be super, super pretty when she opens up. I love this orchid. And even though the leaves don't show it, she's okay. She's okay. She's tolerating temperatures that she doesn't like, but she's acclimated well. And I'm glad that she is because I really do want to keep her. And here's Encyclia Garciana. After being ravaged by a puppy, I had to cut one pseudobulb away, cinnamon and all that jazz. I cut leaves back in order to not see the damage of the teeth marks. We're going to address this orchid as soon as possible. Unfortunately, I lost blooms because King decided that he needed them more than I did. Yeah, not pleased, not pleased, sorry. And then my little Rapiculus Lelias are all chugging along. They're doing fine. I brought two in, the two pieces of the Regentii. Those I brought in because I didn't like what I saw, how the roots were developing or not. And I wonder if that was a bit too cold for them. So I brought them inside in the hopes that they will recover and still throw out more roots. So these guys are doing really well. We'll have to do an update again one day because look at these growths on that little Itambana. Look at that. 
I love them. And they're going to be introduced to somebody new. And here is my Enfeld CI spike. That is the orchid. That is the spike. <laughs> a bit of an overachiever there, huh? <laughs> so there's a few things happening out here, especially with the zygos up there. I'm just going to show you the two Brasovola cuts and then we'll go around to the west side. Change of mind, I'm not going to show the Brasovola cuts because I want to do an update on the Ninja and the Michael Mounts as well. So we'll see them again anyway. Here's my Tolumnia tray getting a little bit of a breeze going because yesterday I think they got a bit too wet and I want to make sure that they dry out. No, no water for them today at all sort of a touch and go situation but the second spike here has opened on this tolumnia and you can see how cute this is the mature one and then you can see how they open and this one is the red devil even though the label doesn't say so i am thinking this is red devil that's why i normally like to put my tolumnias up and say assorted tolumnias because the labels are all over the place What's supposed to bloom isn't blooming what it's supposed to be. But yeah, just open. Very, very pretty. West side. Everything's looking a little bit empty. I can't wait to fill the space. So all these Vandacious orchids are now hanging outside. They are the low temperatures quite well. I'm ma making sure that the Anthocyanin that I see is only from light and not cold stress. So as it rains now and it's a, like a bit warmer, just a tad warmer, but you know, 14 degrees, that's okay. And I can let them just get the rained on. I would like to take advantage of that. There's another bloom that has opened on my loose neary blue, on my wonky spikes. Can you imagine if this one would bloom properly for me? Not get the wonky spikes. What a sight that would be because the limited blooms these spikes are throwing out. It is such a cute little show. Oh, maybe we'll get there. Lavender mist wants to bloom. Judging by the state of the orchid, it's probably its last bloom. I don't know, the roots are not taking up any of the moisture or hydration or anything. I spray her every day, I soak her every day. She gets rained on now every day, every day for the last three days, but yeah, not good. But at least there's a spike and some blooms coming and then we'll see about her future. Very excited to show you my spikes on my Ascocentrum Ampuyathea that skipped blooming in 2020. You see how red that orchid is, but now it's spiking. I'm very, very happy because this orchid was doing really well. And then it was starting to not grow the roots anymore. Then I took it out of that lava rock basket that I had it in and put it into self-watering. And these do not like to have their roots buried in the slightest so I was concerned but I have one root going in the pot and literally that is all I need everybody else is refusing to go down the roots are very firm it's not like you can bend them to do what you want them to do but if I have that one root going down in the pot there I'm okay but I spray them every day which means speaking of yeah let's do this it's very windy it's very dry. We're expecting rain again, but my current humidity is 31%. Can you believe it? While we are expecting rain. That's insane. And Kimmy here is also going to get another shower. And then I'm going to love and leave you, giving you a quick update of my outdoor orchids, what they're up to. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, hello. Ciao, Priya. Despite the temperatures, look at these spikes, they're still coming along. I do spray them regularly, the spikes as well, because I see a lot of ants on them and I don't want them chewing away at the buds. 
I can see that there might be some damage already from ants over there. But at least I'd like to see this orchid. It's been through a lot as well. I've been through a lot with it as well, so I deserve to see some blooms. <laughs> I do apologize for the rocky start. I was a bit flustered. I just wanted to get the job done, take you along. But here we are now with the little Cernuas. Thank you very, very much for watching, for joining me. I appreciate your company. Thank you. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Take care. Bye.